Number 89. Your real name. I don't know, I forgot. Djibouti. Northeast Africa, a small republic of roughly 900,000. I don't take kindly to stupid lies. I don't know. It's not like I'm counting. Oh, you know about that. It's true. I called Sejima's secretary. I got him on the line and I told him something very important. You spoke with him directly? Yeah. I told him to call somebody. Somebody? I can't tell you anymore. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Two days ago, you called our investigation office. You said you know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. prison, right? Yes, I promise. <laughs> You're lying. You don't want to release me. That's fine. I was expecting this anyway. I just wanted a good excuse to leave the prison. What do you mean? You really want to know? 
Here's what I mean! You'll make a good hostage for me. Take me to the exit. Now. Darn. Are you kidding me? A criminal serving a life sentence just escaped from Metro Police. I ordered everyone to keep quiet about this, but it's only a matter of time before the press sniffs this out. We need to get number 89 back before then. Don't you have something to say? I know an apology isn't gonna fix it. But I know I'm responsible for this. I'll get him. Well then, good luck. still has it but don't worry I have a spare I'll give it to you later how would I know after he got to the exit he let me go I didn't see where he went I collapsed right there he punched out an officer and stole his clothes he put on the uniform and brought me with him at gunpoint. Well, he had the gun in his pocket, uh, hiding it. No one on the floor even knew this was happening. He got on the elevator and made it to the ground floor. He even stole my security card. He said he'd kill me if I tried anything. I suppose the whole escape took him about... Uh, Five minutes. He must have planned this. You're rather calm about all this. I'm coming down from being terrified for my life. I'm in a bit of a fugue state right now. Dotson, I know you are already aware of this, but there are security cameras all over this compound. I checked all of them. Number 89 fled in a car that was waiting for him. So he had an accomplice? Yes. Did you see who was driving? I did. Who was it? You and I know him well. Renju? Why? Date, Moma is calling. Moma? From the Kumakuras? I'll connect him. Hey, Date. I just...
just got the word. Renju's been seen. What? Where? Hey, don't forget our deal. Deal? What deal? You forgot already? I'm talking about Tessa. Oh, right. What should we do? We have no choice. We have to take her. To MoMA? Yes. Oh my gosh! Late, 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 late. You're late. I'm going home. Never! Have you forgotten the vows you exchanged? Are you drunk? No, of course not. You're drunk. I'm kid, 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 kid. I'm kidding! I can't believe I'm gonna shovel forge with you. I'm getting excited! We are not shovel forging. I was talking about the date, silly. Shovel forge and a date are synonymous, apparently. So where are we going? No point lying to you. I need you to come with me to an office. I'll have to inspect it, though. What? An insect show? I didn't know you were into that. Well, okay, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Let's go to the insect show! So, where are the Aziptilopratic Colas? Uh, Tessa! Oh! Is this guy the Aziptilopratic Cola? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, sorry. Are you the insect trainer? Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Start the insect show now! Wait a minute. This is a gangster den. Took you long enough. Dante, you tricked me! I wasn't trying to trick you. You just misunderstood me. But I wanted to see the bugs! I really did! Oh, so she likes insects as well.
Momo, I held up my end of the deal. You sure did. You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okiura? Oh, yeah. I haven't introduced this old man yet. I'm 24. Momo is lying. He is at least 48. Absolutely. Sorry for not introducing myself. My name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. Uh, how did you know that? Is he stupid? Sorry for bringing you here. I it's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. About as contradictory as meatless beef. The old boss was really violent. He would take a cheese grater to someone's leg if they looked at him funny. But after I took over, we went crystal clean. Crystal? Methamphetamines. No, we don't do drugs. We don't deal with that stuff. We had to restructure the whole operation. Cut a lot of people off. Cut? Their throats. No, not like that. What happened to Mr. Okiura? I heard he escaped the hospital. So did I. But I don't know anything more than that. Please tell me! about Tessa's dead body? Oh, well... Date saw a parallel world with my dead body in it! A parallel world? Never heard of it? Oh, yeah, of course I have. Yeah, yeah, right. Parallel worlds and all that shit. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I suppose he does. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. But why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Hmm. Either way, I need to find him. Moma may not look it, but he's a huge ASET fan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Gambling. Bet! Dead! ASET! Worries. Uh, forget Fred Aset. Now, what does she say? Aset, you bet. Wow, my catchphrase. Thank you. <laughs> this, this is kind of embarrassing. But sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. <gasps> Gangsters either. Gangsters are awful. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> you said on the phone that you saw Renju. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So, tell me where he is. Mm, 
I could. Hey, I held up my end. I brought Iris like you asked. Date, come here. Date, I don't quite know how to ask this, but... Can you ask Tessa if I can shake her hand, please? Oh, that's it? Sure. Iris, could you do me a favor? A favor? He, uh, wants to see your boobs. What the fuck, dude? I didn't say that! Oh, sorry. What I meant was, he wants to shake your hand. Oh, a handshake. Sure! I would never show my boobs. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. So how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. First, Sunfish Pocket, the maid cafe. Second, Ikume Shrine. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. Got it, thanks. No problem, bro, really. Why do you care? Can I have it? What? Can I have the ring? Why would I give it to you? Hey, can I have the ring? Absolutely, of course you can. Here, take it. Wait, 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 wait. no. I, I can't. You're so cheap. Come on, it's not like you're losing it. It's exactly like I'm losing it. You guys are a good team. Like siblings. <sighs> anyway, Mama, take care of Iris for me. What? Be safe with him. <laughs> Are you serious? Look at his face. Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that. I told you, we're clean now. We all go home on time. We follow government regulations. See ya. Wait! What about Shovel Forge? I told you I never promised to play with you. But you promised me a date. D Dante, is this true? You son of a bitch. Right? Take me with you. If you do, I'll tell you about last night. Her late night visitor. Fine. Don't ignore me! A clean gang? Oh, that's just a toy. Oh, just a toy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Kume Shrine. I want to go to the warehouse, too, where you found my dead body. Bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? Food sounds good. 
I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, my chest hurts. Getting hard to breathe. Wow, this is surprising. What's going on here? Why are you two together? Oh, well, it's... Forget it. Thanks for letting me stay last night. Oh, no trouble at all. Anytime. You could even live with me if you want. <laughs> That's a great idea. Right now, really sucks. This girl. I've heard that Renji was sighted here. When do you mean? When? I got the info a few minutes ago, but I don't know when he was seen. Oh. Ringing any bells? Well, he hasn't come by today, but yesterday. Yesterday? But I was here yesterday. that after you and Ota left why didn't you tell me sooner you didn't ask and I don't have any way to contact you damn it we just missed him he was looking for Iris he was asking everyone where she was. Looking for me? Yeah. Did he give a reason? Particular. Iris, can you think of why he would be looking for you? No, not at all. Azuki?
Suzuki comes here a lot. She's really friendly with everyone. I like it here. Everyone treats me nice. Is it because you're the daughter of the owner? No, it's not like that. We're BFFs! She wields extraordinary power with that trident. The Okiura family is really something, huh? Well, a triple ward sea devil or an anacanthus barbatus. That's a mouthful. Mr. Okira helped me when I was just starting out. You know how my mom is single? He really supported her. He even changed my diaper when I was a little baby. I got hired by Lemon Escape all because of him. Iris used to stream all her own content. Like singing and dancing and gaming and stuff. But before we knew it, she went viral. Right, I heard about that. That's how she started getting offers, right? But because Iris's mom knows Renju, she decided to go with Lemon Escape. But there's more to it than that. There are other reasons. Daddy was totally taken in by her talent. Her talent? Dancing, really. Her dancing is what got her into Lemnus Gate. He knew ever since she was young that she would be talented. He didn't want any other agencies to have her. I didn't know that. Daddy's not the type to give confidence. <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. I didn't know he thought of me that way. Iris, I still need to know. What were you doing Sunday at 2 a.m.? You haven't fulfilled your promise. This is the date. I fulfilled my promise. I told you. No info until the date is complete. Don't you get it? was crying earlier. Crying? Yes. We were trying to cheer her up. What happened to her mom was... And we thought she was having a hard time. She must have come here looking for company. That's probably why she stayed with Iris last night. She didn't want to be alone. Shoko's body is still under the jurisdiction of the police. There has not been a ceremony, nor has the body been cremated. The culprit has not been caught, and we cannot locate Renju. And on top of that, her roommate has abandoned her. I did not abandon her. In any case, there are many ways you could calm Mizuki down. Mizuki is just trying to act strong. Please, try to understand. Are you asking me about that? No 
just curious. That company was made by my grandpa, but daddy has nothing to do with it. I don't know anything about the warehouse. I thought I told you this already. Don't ask me the same questions over and over. Date, look. She's lying? Possibly. She may just be excited or upset. from back when I worked here. We would hang out outside of work, too. We go to haunted places and UFO sightings and stuff. Blow those boys away! Blow those boys away! Yeah, blow those boys! Mizuki, uh... shouldn't say that. More than sleeping and eating? Well, maybe about the same as eating. Anyway, I've always loved moving my body, ever since I was a little girl. And you're fast, too. Yeah, I did a lot of track meets. Were you always the anchor? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Hey, want to hear something cool? Iris is the goddess of rainbows in Greek mythology. She's the messenger of the gods. She's really fast. Rainbows being so fast to disappear was the source of the legend. You're as fast as your namesake, then. You want to race? <laughs> sure, when we get the chance. Right here? Oh, I want to see too. Me too. I would also like to see that. Mm, I don't know. Come on, just show us. But... All right, I'll go set up. Wait! Jeez. Fine, if you insist. on the pyre, fruit never expires, you've seen in your eyes, you've seen in your mind. While the old father has while the blind need the blind, the marble loses shine, the eye clouds by design. But we know in our soul the one hope, the one truth, what if we believe we can, we can make miracles. Even with the devils of time against you, never let the fire fade. 
that song. Mr. Okira wrote the music, and I wrote the lyrics. So it holds a special place in my heart. That's right. I forgot he wrote music. Yeah, he's really talented. I look up to him. He's done so much for me. I know I can rely on him more than anyone. find Renju here. But we discovered that he was looking for Iris. But why? We can think about that later. Let's get going. Yeah, you're right. You okay? <laughs> it's okay. I just, uh, missed a step there. A flower over there. Flower? You can't see it from here, can you? I know it's there because I've been to this shrine before. It's called Ikume Iribiko Isachi no Mikoto, or sometimes Ikume Tenno, or Ikume no Mikoto. There are legends about this place written in the old text. It's a shrine dedicated to the gods. The old legend goes like this. One day, Ikume Iribiko sent one of his followers, Taji Momori, on an urgent quest to find a mysterious, magical fruit. A fruit called Tokijiku no Kaku. It's said that eating it will grant you immortality. After many hardships, Taji Momori was able to find the fruit. By the time he got back, Ikume Iribiko had died. Tajimomori mourned. He handed half of the fruit to the man's wife, and he left the other half on Ikume Iribiko's grave, then died on the spot. It is said that that fruit is still inside the shrine behind us. Really? The fruit of immortality? Yes. It's nostalgic. This place is a memorable one for me. Six years ago, I used to come here with someone. Someone? I used to call him uncle. He was a thoughtful, reliable man. I thought of him as a father. But one day, he just disappeared. She's talking about... Hitomi's lover. When you asked me why I became an idol, I wasn't being entirely truthful. I told you that it was because I wanted to become famous. But more specifically, it was for Uncle. I 
I've been looking for him for six years, but I didn't find him anywhere. I didn't know where else to look. So instead of me finding him, I thought that he could find me instead. You think if you became famous, he'd contact you? Yeah. So that is why she became an idol. I mean, it's also been my dream since I was little. That's a part of it, too. So why do you use the name Asa? Shouldn't you use your real name? Oh no, I don't have to. He was the one who came up with the name Asa. He told me that if I ever became an idol, I should use that name. Not interested? No, not really. I'd rather have normality than immortality. Mr. Okura isn't here. I mean, of course he isn't. It's not like we came here right away. He's already taken off. Too bad. It looks like there are no further clues here. It appears we've wasted our time. An iris. More specifically, a winter iris. This is the same flower that was on display at Iris's house. How did you know? It's the same kind that's at my house. I told you about what it means, right? Good news and hope. Iris is also a part of the Eye. And the Greek goddess of rainbows. A messenger goddess. I told you at Sunfish Pocket, right? That's why the flower means good news and hope. Date, we have no time to waste. We should get moving. Got it. I saw it, I'm sure. Your corpse, Iris, right here. But I'm here now. Maybe I'm a ghost. You don't look like a floating sheet. You have legs. But maybe they're not legs. Maybe they're my boobs. Save me in your dream? What did you mean by that? I told you that I'm with an organization called Abyss, right? Yeah, you told me two days ago. We find clues in the minds of suspects and witnesses. We enter what we call Somnium, a dream world projected by their subconscious. That's what the entire organization is about. How do you even do that? We have a machine that we call the Sync Machine. What is that? It's a Sync Machine. That's not an explanation! Tell me how it works! Well, uh, I can explain, but it will require a bit of background to understand. Background? So my corpse was on here? Yeah. Hey, get out of my house! What the hell? I'm a poltergeist inside the circuit board. What? 
You said I was a ghost, right? Maybe I'm haunting the warehouse with spooky astral projections. What are you talking about, Iris? over there looks so good yeah you're right but if i tried to eat it in one bite i'd break my jaw what are you talking about date that's a cardboard box you start <sighs> Nanotech? Yeah! Technology related to really small things. Like, really teeny tiny things. And when they make a machine, they're called nanomachines. I heard they use them a lot for medical and tech fields. Some of the cutting-edge nanomachines can even go inside your body and cure illnesses. They can even cure cancer. And they go, beep, beep, beep. That's what Mom said. Well, I don't know if it was like, beep, beep, or... But anyway, nanotechnology costs tons of money. Only a few people can even afford it. My college professor said only the richest of the rich have nanotechnology. But he's pretty liberal, so... Largely accurate. Nano is a prefix meaning 10 to the negative 9th power. A nanometer is therefore 0 0.00000001 meters. The sync machine uses machines approximately 2.16 nanometers long. Viruses are on average 20 to 970 nanometers. So sync nanomachines are far smaller than that. This allows them to access neural circuitry. During a sync, the nanomachines are used to write in the sinker's data. I guess not. No. I know what it is. It's the core programming behind AI, right? That's right. What? What? You're shivering. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. To borrow Pewter's explanation, with the advent of the Wadjet system, we can extract the data of the human psyche. This data is sent to the brain, which achieves the sync. I've heard of it. The blood-brain barrier, right? Inside the school, there's an army of little teeny tiny soldiers that surround the brain. They protect the brain from bad stuff in the blood, right? That's almost it, yeah. The blood-brain barrier describes the architecture of the microvessels of the brain.
It is a kind of shield that protects the brain. To get through, an object must be no larger than 0.4 nanometers. Objects too large to slip through the barrier cannot physically access the brain. Okay, you have the basics down. Let me explain how sinking works. Sinkers like me equip the sink gear and use it to access the subject's brain. Inside the helmet are nano cables, and on the tip of each of these cables is a special nano machine. But the machine can't reach the brain through blood alone. Do you know why? The BBB soldiers say go away and push them back? Well, yeah, kind of. But for the sink to work, we have to get the nano machines into the brain itself. How do we do that? Drill a hole in the skull? No. In Shovel Forge, you can use a pickaxe and... No, it has nothing to do with tools. We don't have to open a hole. Skulls already have holes in them. One of those holes is the optic canal, which is a nerve canal located behind the eyes. The nano cables of the sink gear go through your eyes, then go to the back of your eye socket, then through the optic canal to the sea. The sea? The sea of brain cells, anyway. That sounds kind of romantic. It's only a chunk of protein. Once the nano cables arrive at their destination, they can begin the sink process. They slide into the brain like roots of a tree, and on the tip of each cable, the nano machine sends and receives. This is controlled by the Wadjet system, and that's how the sinker and the subject exchange information. Exchange? Think of it this way the human brain has a max capacity of one psyche, one consciousness. Multiple instances of consciousness inside one brain can cause a total collapse of higher brain functions. You know how a car only has one steering wheel? If there were two, there would be accidents all over the place. Well, don't some planes have two control sticks? Okay, eh, maybe it wasn't the best metaphor. What I'm trying to say is that the human body can only hold one person. If you try to have two people inside one brain, it will break. I see. Because of this, the sinker's data goes inside the subject's brain. And the only thing inside the subject's mind at the time of the sink are their memories. Like a house with no one inside. We sinkers break into the house, look for clues, and leave. All within six minutes. There's a time limit? Yes. Or else, the house will collapse on our heads. The neural circuits would become too deeply entwined with one another. To put it simply, the sinker would be trapped inside the subject's house. Thank you for explaining it. I don't completely understand how sync works, but still. Just don't tell anyone. This is extremely confidential. It's okay, I won't. Date, tell me this. Hmm? Who did you sync with yesterday? Didn't I show you his picture? Congressman So Sejima. So that's why you know so much about him. But you've never met him, right? I haven't, I swear. Hey, Date, you saw my corpse here, right? I did. I'm sure of it. And in so stream, you saved me from getting killed. Yeah. And then somehow, I resurrected. Yeah. Hmm. Date, that means you're... Achoo! Is the cold too much for Iris? Yeah, I'm freezing too. Iris, let's get out of here for now. Roger that!
I'm so hungry. T Tessa? Why are you here? I told Dache I was hungry, so. I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual, Ota. Y yes, right away. Could you kick that bucket there? Uh, sure. Like this? Yeah, but more. Like this? <laughs> this is awesome! I did not realize there was someone more perverted than Date. in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation. Lying on the ground. He means sleeping. Date, why are you with Tessa? <laughs> we are. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Oh, a date. I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? No thanks. I'm fine. Yeah, my dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure. My treat, Date. You're still looking for him? Well, like I told you before, I don't know. Omelette rice! Ota's omelette rice is so good it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a compliment? <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. Yeah, I have. Have you met Ota's mother, Mayumi? Yeah, but I don't think she likes me. That's not true. Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa. Not very reassuring. Whether out of jealousy or otherwise, she still doesn't like Iris. Iris. About your coming back to life. Hold it! What do you mean, coming back to life? Uh... Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa... died? Yep. Tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail. Oh, sure. How should I explain this? Well, um... Oh, I know. Let's...
Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. What if I win? I'll do anything. A anything? Mm-hmm. Anything. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Okay, let's go! One, two, three, shoot! Shoot! A tie. The most boring result. Well, we agreed on the rules. Let's shake hands. Shaky, shaky. We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? We tied and shook hands. But in a different timeline, maybe I got a reward from you. Or maybe you could have seen me naked or something. Why did I choose rock? What exactly were you going to make her do? So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can. Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? Or the 100 million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. The Spatial Temporal Man, and The Lost Friend, and the story of two sisters. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Well, yeah. The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened when the news broke. People all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. Dante, look at this picture. There's a famous experiment regarding this picture. You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba, and which one is Kiki? Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. The rounder one is Booba, and the jagged one is Kiki. Isn't that weird? In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way, and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. This world is full of really interesting stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? That humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are.
There are lots of examples, like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings. Or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car, but in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh. I thought it was a four-seater, too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. Nope, it's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh. Lines for movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. Worshipping the sun and the sea, or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. There exists a second psychic system of a collective universal and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. That's... A parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the anthropic principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. So, there's this girl. Let's call her B. She's practicing piano in her room. And her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it. But she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went. But then, B hears her sister at the door. I'm home! B 
B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, when did you go outside? But her mom says, what are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it, and she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. Yeah. What B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. I know a ton of stories like this. Like being suddenly transported one year into the future. And there's a missing persons report out for you. You look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. It's not the one you remember having. You look through the contacts, and it's filled with names you don't recognize. Sounds scary. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese. But they're speaking a completely different language. And all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. That's a prime example of a parallel world. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. The Spatial Temporal Man. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Yeah, maybe. There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking like nothing happened. asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? But Suzuki just says, yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious. But he's not getting any answers. So they just part ways and go home. The story only gets weirder from here. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. Hey says, What are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. 